Well, hello everybody, and today is Maiden Day for the Mini Race Wing. It's built, it's set up, it should be good. I'm crapping my pants, as <laughs> I seem to on any Maiden, especially this, which seems to be uh, a very fast wing, although it should be more robust in crashes. Build-wise, and I will be putting a sort of full detailed explanation of what I did on, on the blog, but just to go through things quickly, the instructions are fairly outstanding. I tell you every single thing about attaching the elevons, installing the servos, where to install them, uh, the amount of deflection needed, where to put the tape, everything. The only things uh, that perhaps needed uh, a little bit more thought or attention, although I found things, is it's quite crucial about the length of a servo lead you've got hanging out of your wing and, and trying to match that up with the right length of servo lead there because you've got that join uh, of the servo extension to be able to fold around in there whilst we, we cable tie the servo extension around these posts. So in the event of the wing coming off, the post acts as the sort of the brake uh, and in, instead of it going through the receiver it should pull off there. So to get that right needed a, a little bit of jigging about. I've also struggled a little bit to find the CG. Uh, one because it doesn't want to quite balance anywhere. It It's on the CG line, It depending how you hold it, it will fall slightly forward or slightly backwards. There's not a place I can find where it will actually balance. Um, and to hit that CG, I actually um, moved the wings backwards. The two joiners here, you can move backwards or forwards to your heart's content, which is really good for messing around with it. So the, the initial thing, or the initial recommended setups, would have had the wings right here. So the, the leading edge would have come here. They've been moved back one to get the CG better. Still got the battery all the way forward, and the motorway, the the motor all the way in, got a particularly chunky ESC on there, um, and that battery all the way forward means this little Q6 is quite precariously <laughs> sticking out there, just waiting to say kill me please. Um, but I think that's okay. I might run just a little bit of weight in there just on the first launch, just to make sure that CG is right because it's it seems to balance out correctly. Uh, but sometimes doesn't. <laughs> so it's maybe about to go a little nose heavy. I can always take it off later. Uh, but yeah, that's how it looks. And I always like to do the before, just in case it goes seriously wrong. Here it is, all looking pretty and nice. So for the Maiden, as I've got uh, a setup that can run 3S and 4S quite nicely, I thought I'd do both. I might start out with uh, 3S2200 because it happens to be pretty much the same size as weight as a 4S 1800. I thought, well, that's a way of testing both setups and obviously a little less crazy to start with. I don't think I'll have a problem with the thrust though. It's it's not super heavy and it's got a very powerful motor. Well, that a reasonably small prop. Anyway, I'm just gathering on. Let's uh, jump cut here and let's go to the Maiden. So just to set the scene here, it's windy, pretty damn gusty, and we just can't seem to catch a break on the, the weather for this. I met up with Neil, who's a really handy second pair of eyes. Uh, he helped me double check the surfaces, make sure I hadn't made any obvious mistakes. And between us, we decided not to put any weight on and the CG was about right. So I loaded up first, as I mentioned, with a 3S 2200. And I decided to go straight for an FPV flight just because I figured it was pretty well set up and if there was a problem I could just dunk it down um, and Neil was spotting for me so he should be able to see if there was an immediate issue. So before all the chairs flew away and stuff we decided to go for an immediate launch over the head so we've got less chance of any torque roll and we're off and running. Now 
Now, I have to say, I expected this wing to be all over the sky. I've flown my normal wings in this sort of wind, and it's not a particularly pleasant experience. They're controllable. They can even be fun when you're chasing people around, but they're really hard to handle. This thing, I mean, it's not perfectly smooth, no, but it's managing to cut through the wind really well. I was immediately really impressed. The perception I got from the goggles is it was just immediately pretty locked in. Um, I didn't trim anything. It just flew quite nicely. The only thing I was having real problems with is actually finding out where we were. This isn't a position we fly from very often. And there's not particularly any landmarks about. Um, and it's not like we're the only dots in a green field because there's horses all over. Uh, and they seem to sort of almost be the same colour and shape as two of us standing in the field. So fortunately, Neil was there to keep telling me to turn left or right at uh, various times to actually bring me back round to the right direction. So on this initial flight, I really didn't do much. I was just trying to make sure everything was working and I was used to the way it handled. And it seemed to handle really nicely. It was um, pretty easy to fly. I mean, the wing wasn't affecting it. It wasn't pushing the wings up or down. It obviously had a bit of bobbling around in it, but it seemed pretty stable to say it's just, you know, a raw plane, no stabilisation, no AP. Um, it just pretty much goes in the direction you point it, which I was really pleased about. I did a couple of higher throttles, maybe 75%, but nothing 100% to really push it, mainly because I was trying to just figure out the area by the time I'd figured out a, a, a better landmark for how to get back to where we were we hit the issue from the ground me and Neil both heard a noise it sounded like something had struck a prop or something had broken and we could hear the difference in the way the motor sounded this is what it sounds like if we look at the HD footage So I immediately thought something had blown. Fortunately, I still seem to have power. I still seem to have control. I got the impression that I had a, a little bit more vibration from it. Although it didn't seem too bad, to be honest. But you don't go and carry on flying if something suddenly goes bang. So we brought it down for an immediate landing. In which I attempted to land and then glided on about eight miles down the hill. Now, it's so windy, you can't actually hear me speak here. But what I'm saying is we found that half the prop had disappeared and there was a small hole in the wing. And initially, we couldn't figure this thing out at all. So what happened? Initially, we thought we just had a defective prop. This has exploded um, and had a problem. But we couldn't really explain how that prop exploding behind the wing would ever come forwards to hit it and make this hole here which has really weirded out. And obviously my poor wing is smashed to pieces and completely ruined now there's a hole in it. I'll fill it in later. So what we did find is when I was, I loaded up another prop and I thought, you know, maybe the prop is just defective and let's try it on 4S. What I then noticed is that what we have in here, cut the closer picture, is the motor mount has these four bolts running in it, which go to these press nuts in the plate here and I only had two where there should have been four. So two of the bolts had dropped out, one of which had obviously dropped, hit the prop, jumped up, hit the wing and caused all sorts of problems. So good news was that um, the prop hadn't just exploded because these are, are built for speed so we were a bit weirded out by it. Bad news is that the screws dropped out. Why was this? Um, I thought it was a bit weird, so I did drop a line to Marcus to explain what happened and if I should have been using Loctite in these. It didn't mention it in the manual, which is otherwise very thorough about what to use and where. And he was pretty surprised as this happened. It had not happened before. Uh, the press nuts were secure and you could get them really tight. I found I couldn't get them really tight. I tightened one too much and the press nut had come out. And <laughs> then we find out the problem. 
after sending him a picture and him asking which way the prop nuts were facing, I kind of twigged that I might have had the plate upside down. Needless to say, I feel pretty dumb about mounting the plate upside down. Now, I checked the manual and I was pretty sure I followed it because I kind of looked at what the picture looks like and I'll show you a picture here. But it, it wasn't a very good picture and Marcus had since, and before I mentioned it to him, updated the manual because uh, a number of people had done the same thing. Basically, I'd put the, this plate on upside down so the press nuts were facing downwards so they didn't have any real strength because they weren't they would basically pull out of their position instead of having the larger bit to pull against so you couldn't really get them tight so the vibration or whatever had made the other two screws fall out this this is it fixed basically i took the gear off flipped it over put it all back on again which yeah, didn't take too long and i've just got a couple of these um bolts on order to uh, screw back in. I mean, yeah, you can use Loctite, it's not gonna hurt. I use the um, the Loctite, which is not permanent, and that will make sure that there's nothing gonna move there. The, one of the reasons I didn't even think about it is, obviously, the ability to loosen them up, move the motor in and out, is, is what's quite key to this thing. Sadly, though, we couldn't go and do another flight with only two nuts holding the motor mount in. It just would be asking for disaster. <laughs> So we have to go back and do it again. So as far as the review goes, I can't really give you my final conclusions. I can tell you that in the conditions it had and the way it flew, I was really impressed. But obviously I want to get out there and I want to put 4S on it and I really want to give it some proper beans and find out what happens. Um, I only made one little other change and that was to point my camera down slightly. Um, it was kind of neutral before I think with planes and, and wings it's it's quite useful to point slightly downwards because often you're sort of cruising like this and you need to be knowing where your ground reference is. So I just wanted to show what happened on my Maiden and give you my thoughts so far and obviously to say hey don't mount your plate upside down although with the new instructions that would be hard to do. Aside from waiting for the screws to arrive I'm going to go away with the family next week so I won't be taking uh, the wing with me so I have to wait a little bit longer to get the final decent flights to get uh, the full review but uh, so far it's a thumbs up uh, I'm hoping it's gonna really pan out to be really great once I get flying it some more and, and get the 4S on there. In the meantime I will catch you later see you in the next one bye